Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. Today, I'm at the Cliff House Hotel in Ardmore Village in Southern Ireland. The building was gutted and remodeled by the O'Callaghan family, and then opened again in 2008. This morning, we get the chance to walk around and photograph some of those really unique design features. So I'm going to try and highlight nine tips on how to make better interior pictures. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. A quick word about equipment. We're not going to look at anything specialized. Typically what we're going to do is look at stuff that's found in most camera bus camera bag. And what I'm thinking about is a wide angle zoom, say a 16 to 35 millimeter, a medium zoom, 24 to 70, and two primes, a 24 millimeter, 1.4, a 50 millimeter, 1.4, just for that extra aperture of versatility. But you really have to think about a tripod. It's the most important part of your equipment. It's got to be sturdy, it's got to be a good one. And as for the light, well, we're going to go for the natural stuff. Tip one, go stand in the corner. Getting as tight into a corner of a room as possible will give you the widest perspective achievable, especially important if you're photographing small rooms. But try every corner before shooting. Not all corners are created equal. The layout might be different, or the way the light falls might be different. Don't get too fancy with your angle of view. Just shoot it at head height with the camera level. And remember the tripod. Tip two, organize the space prior to shooting. Don't just start firing away at random. Have a really good look at the way the room is set up and move things if the composition calls for it. Of course, this is easy if shooting Auntie Nelly's kitchen, but it can be a problem if you want to rearrange the British Museum's Ming vase collection. If you can't reorganize it, then it's up to the individual photographer to find an alternative points of view to optimize the composition. Next up is light, tip three. We won't be using any strobes, just the light that is available in each room, plus a reflector. Turn on all the lights, and then play around with different combinations plus any window light that's available. Just remember that different light sources produce different color casts. That's why it's important to shoot in RAW, so you can adjust the color later in the computer. What we're looking for is a well-balanced light. Four, get it straight. Ensure that all vertical lines in the interior are going straight up and down, and not converging at the top or bottom of the frame, like a railroad track running off in the distance. Work off a tripod and make sure it's level. Keep the lines of the features, like doors, bookcases, and windows, all parallel with the image frame. If the lens is tilted forward or leaning back, the interior will look like it's falling away or falling over. Vertical correction is one of the most important aspects of interior photography. When taking images, if you think you need to correct the vertical in post, make sure you allow enough room around the subject for the cropping. Number five, it's not in the hands. Tripod, tripod, tripod. If you want crisp, clean interior images, there is no substitute for a sturdy tripod. The heavier, the better. Tip six, control your aperture. Controlling depth of field is a key tool for the interior photographer. Got an annoying background? Get close to the subject, open up the aperture and blur it out. Alternatively, if shooting a large space where you want good depth of field, then close the aperture down for maximum sharpness from foreground through the background. Oh yeah, did I mention tripod? Tip seven, get high. For the most part, interior photography works best when shot at eye level. But to add a sense of scale, try shooting with a wide-angle lens from high in a corner. Look for a higher vantage point like a staircase, or if one's handy, use a stepladder. Post-production is our friend. Don't shy away from the computer. With all that confined space shooting, it's rare that an interior image comes out perfect right off the RAW file. But try to get the compositions as correct as possible in the camera to prevent a heavy hand in post. And what I'm mainly thinking about here is an excessive need for vertical corrections. So post is our friend, but keep it to a minimum. And lastly, number nine. Just get out there and do it. Get creative. Take chances with your compositions. After all, in the end, they're only pixels and can be deleted and reshot.
So that's it for me. I'm Doug McKinley for Adorama TV. Now don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos. And you can like, share, comment on this video. And please stop by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.